that if you can eat, then eat about the protein sources. What about the supplements overall that can help you while being on the carb cycling? That's that's the that's the difference. I'm I'm glad you asked that. And we didn't even script this, so this is perfect. There are times where liquid nutrients are are better. There are, and the most important is intra workout. You're not going to be eating chicken during your workout. And also you don't even want whole protein during your workout because all you need is the essential amino acids, you know, and, and, uh, and the BCAAs is specifically leucine is the trigger for protein synthesis, but that's also an essential amino acid. Yeah. And so, so what you want is you during the workout, you don't know if you're stimulating muscle growth, say a cell right here says, boom, I want to add muscle. It needs all the essential amino acids right there, or it can't do it. So what we do, and actually I got a bottle here, field rations. Is a, it's a mix of uh, essential amino acids uh, with, a, uh, with a high amount of leucine uh, combined with highly branched cyclodextrins uh, for the carbohydrate. But uh, if, if you read into you know, high molecular weight carbohydrates, the, one of the problems is, is their, their osmolarity is so low. So to back, back wait, the reason you don't want to drink like grape juice during a workout is because grape juice has a molecular weight and an osmolarity similar to blood. So that means there's no pull. If you remember osmosis, you know, there's no, no, no pull. So that stuff, that grape juice sits in your stomach. There's nothing to suck it into the small intestine, really. So blood kind of pools. And sometimes there can even be a reverse gradient where water, water will come from the bloodstream and pool in the stomach and you get bloated. You know, if you ever drink a ton of the juice and you, like, your stomach's all bloated, it's not just from the juice. It's because other water is going in there, too. And that water now can't go to your muscle and you feel like crap. Where a high molecular weight carbohydrate has a low osmolarity, and what that does is, it, it, instead of pooling water in the stomach, it basically is like a bowling ball right into the small intestine, and that's where nutrients get absorbed. The problem is, though, is then the water pools there in the intestines, and if it pools in the large intestine, you're going to get something called dumping syndrome, which is appropriately named because you're going to have to run to the bathroom and and release your diarrhea. So what we do is we do a five to one ratio of highly branched cyclodextrins with dextrose to raise the osmolarity just enough to avoid dumping syndrome, but keep it low enough that you don't get any bloating. And then, and then the final thing is, because we're trying to store glycogen, because we, we, you know, we want the amino acids, essential amino acids to build muscle if anything happens, if there's a trigger for it. But we also want to get as much of a pump and drive nutrients to the muscle as good as we can. And to, so we want to store, form glycogen. And so another problem you'll see with intra-workouts is they won't have any sodium. And so what glycogen is, is glycogen is carbs in the muscle, but it's one for every one part of glucose, there's four parts water. So glycogen is made of one part glucose, four parts water, and then the carrier is sodium. And so if you don't have the sodium, you will can't carry it. And, and you can even track this. You take someone who's had too many diuretics and their blood sodium content is super low, their blood sugar skyrockets. That, and that's why you can't fill out. That's really what spilling over is more is that you can't, it's not that you had too many carbs. It's that you don't have the other nutrients to take those carbs to the muscle. They spill into the bloodstream and you look like crap. And so we have, a, we, we have a, added sea salt and, and other minerals also to make sure that all the components needed for glycogen storage are there. So, I mean, we're, really proud of it. We have a whole like research paper written comparing it to Gatorade and what the original research studies on Gatorade. I think just in general for, for any sport where you, you know, like where you're working hard for an hour or more, I think it's very valuable it, to get the message out, you know, is hard, you know, cause it's like, you know, obviously Gatorade is, uh, I think Coke owns that Coca-Cola they're going to out advertise me, <laughs> you know? So you, it's hard to get the word out, but it's really, is, it really is a product we're proud of. That's why you need uh, you know, to do more podcasts than, yeah. <laughs> than this one. Uh, when it comes to the supplements, I still want to ask about the GDAs, you know, the glucose disposal agents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you use them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, our, our product suppressor is, uh, I've been using that for years. So I, I always track data. I got like Google Drives full of just like noting what my clients say and whether. Uh, so from what my experience is, is pr properly used 1500 milligrams of berberine per day, when it's good berberine and it's paired with something like cinnamon or piperine, black pepper extract, something to improve the bioavailability, 1500 milligrams of that per day appears to be about as effective at lowering blood sugar as a thousand milligrams of metformin, you know? And so you think that's great, but then you also think, well, why just take metformin then? Well, the problem with that is metformin works through cyclic AMP, which is in like an anti-inflammatory, it's an anti-hypertrophy pathway. So metformin actually slows the rate of muscle growth. Now, if you're on anabolics, it's probably not going to slow it enough to make much of a difference, but we don't want to slow it at all. Now, berberine works through a cascade reaction with IGF-1. 
So not, berberine works just as well in metformin, but rather than hold back muscle growth, it, it works through IGF-1 to promote muscle growth. So it's like the perfect product. You know, it's like, why wouldn't it, why would anyone not take this? You know, regardless of what you're doing, if I could raise my IGF-1 and improve my carb utilization and insulin sensitivity, that's a no brainer, you know? And then we have like the other things and we have fenugreek also and fenugreek seed actually can help. It's an interesting one because it lowers blood sugar also by like, by stimulating insulin secretion. And actually you can theoretically go hypoglycemic just from fenugreek seed, almost as if you took insulin. Uh, and we, we use that on, on purpose because the IGF-1 is actually more insulinogenic on a milligram per milligram basis than actual insulin. So when we combine that with the fenugreek, it's a nice little added benefit. And of course, we have the cinnamon uh, in, uh, for, in the pep pepper for uh, increased bioavailability. And then we have uh, RALA, which just a, is another standard product that's shown time and time again to be beneficial to body composition, body fat levels, and improved glucose, you know, improved insulin sensitivity.